shotgamma.com. Hello, everybody. Today is Friday, May 27th, and I'm here with my good friend Saad. He is CEO and founder of Shift Search. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you for having me. So obviously GameStop has had an, uh, just an amazing move recently and we wanted to step in and do some analysis of that. There's an incredible overlay between some of the tools that we offer here at Spot Gamma and the incredible data that you guys offer at Shift. And so we want to show a crossover between those and how you can kind of blend the tools together uh, and really dig into exactly what's happening. So obviously we're looking at a chart here of GameStop and it just launched earlier this week. You know, it was around... 90 bucks and i think there was this people were flagging some of the data that the borrow i believe was really elevated in it and that short positions were picking up and with that the stock just kind of lit up and in a small segue one of the things that i noted that was kind of interesting here was that um it it's sort of this stock along with some of the other you know memes like amc and and some of the things that some people may argue is a little bit riskier those seem to take off before the s p and it was like this risk on signal for the market and, and I wanted to sort of state that this was a different type of flow than we saw two weeks before. And the reason I brought up this chart is because you'll note that there was also a 30% spike last week, or maybe the week before last, or on the 12th, where all of a sudden GameStop ripped 30%, right? In the matter of That's like right. 20 or 30 minutes, but then it faded almost immediately. And I think this was a margin call. That's what I think this was. And there was a bunch of other stocks that did the same thing. And so when you compare, you know, just even just the single candle, right? to what it, what took place earlier this week, there was a different kind of flavor to that flow, right? And we also saw a bunch of aggressive call buying, which we can show and, shirt and, and shift because you guys have a really cool way to look at that, that data. So if we're gonna zoom in just a little bit today, because we wanna, again, focus on today and just some of the interesting things happening. Obviously the market overall, the PCE lower than, lower than expected PCE reading, Gave a bullish angle to the market today as people think the Fed may back off a little bit, right? So GameStop popped higher and it's faded after the close. And so you say, well, yeah. why does GameStop fade while the rest of the market's up 2% in this case? And we think this is because there's a very large expiration today for GameStop. And, and during me mania, this is a key point that what we would see is big volumes, right, on the weekly options. So traders come in on Monday and they want to buy the Friday options. Those are generally the cheapest one, but you can also get a little more punch out of those. Uh, a little bit higher on the risk reward scale, I'd say. A little bit more risk, but you can make a lot more with those weekly options. And so what's so fascinating about the where this is trading is I want you to note this 130 level right here. So if we look at our equity hub, which which just gives you, again, this summary overview of what's taking place, I want to highlight we, what we call the key gamma strikes at 130. That's where most of the gamma, that's the most of the gamma for calls and puts and all expirations are tied to that 130 strike. And 40% of that gamma is set to expire uh, today. So that is a lot of gamma in the in the stock. There's also a lot of delta. So there's a lot of in the money options expiring today. So this is a very large expiration for GameStop in particular. And this 130 level is key to that expiration, right? Because in theory, uh, we're gonna get a lot of decay. It's kind of that, almost like that max pain thing that a lot of people talk about, right? Where this 130 level is, is gonna attract the stock. And if you think about you know the, the decay of call and put options, particularly those weekly options, they have the heaviest decay the closer we get to expiration, that 4 p.m. expiration. And so this 130 level suddenly kind of makes a lot. Of we're going to flip to one more of our tools just to frame the high level. And then we're going to flip over to the shift console. And you're really going to see the, the power of kind of combining these two. So if I bring up GME in our hero console, and what, what hero is doing is it's reading all of the real-time options deltas traded. So every single trader that comes in, they buy a call, they buy a put on Robinhood or Interactive Brokers or any of the other platforms or through a, a desk like JP Morgan. We pick up that flow and we say, okay, what is the hedging impact, the dealer hedging impact that we estimate from that? And what you'll notice here is the purple line, which is the delta impact, starts off in a positive angle with a positive tilt. Starts off with a positive tilt, but then you notice that all of a sudden you get, boom, you get this big rush of negative deltas coming in. And if we dig in a little further, this shows the puts and calls, you can see what happened is people monetize calls right? We broke up over this 130, 135, 140 area and people started selling call options. Now, why would they do that? Well, probably because the calls expire in uh, you know, about four or five hours here. Uh, there was some put buying as well, but it was call, particularly call selling that really hit the stock. And note that as we came down to that 130 area, curiously, the, the flow subsided. So you can see the put buyers backed off. That's what, that's what we get when this blue line shifts side and the call buying seemed to kind of start to pull back a little bit as well, particularly as we hit the 130. So now that we've given the spot game overview, now we can flip over to shift and you're going to see the power of 
saying, okay, now that spot gamma is kind of like laid out what the you know the the thirty thousand foot view is. Let's dig into into exactly what is trading. So what I want to note note here, and and Saad, you can help me walk through the shift dashboard. But basically, it was around let's call it ten twenty, right? That this mm -hmm. negative delta flow started to come into the market. And so here we have GameStop in the console as well. We're just looking at today's flow. And this is the 1020 bucket. So if I click on the 1020 time frame, you'll see that down at the bottom here, what will come up is the actual flow that really traded in that 1020 time frame. And you'll note the top on the top uh, right of the grid under what's trading, the May 130 puts, the puts that expire today, they're the biggest of this particular time frame right on the put side. Yeah, that just proves to you exactly, exactly at that time frame, a lot of put buying came in. Yeah, right. And, you know, and, right and, off the hero indicators and going with these side by side, it just it's a great way to marry of a of a full understanding of the market. Yeah, and it's a bit curious too. You know, under that that in the same time frame, there's these leaps, these Jan twenty fifty calls uh, that yeah. are trading, and those are big delta options. So just a few of those can really start to generate some of that ne negative delta trading. Uh, that we picked up in our in our system as well but then uh, obviously the third line down there is the may 27th 135 puts so again these are confirming that the big activity on uh, you know as we would expect looking at the spot gamma data you can actually see well in reality what is exactly trading at that moment are these put options right and and people are monetizing or or rolling into those puts now what i would guess in that case is it it, it may well have been people that were short those put options that wanted to close them or they could just be yeah. short dated traders that are trying to get a, catch a quick buck off of buying an option that expires in, in just a few hours and the other thing that's interesting to note here is off of the open there was just there was a lot of call buying right i think people tried to kind of jump on board with that call buying right as a sort of stock opened and and when the stock pops in those first 10 minutes and then it fades kind of hard i think that what happens again is when you're in some of these short dated options, if you own the May 150 call, that the value of that option is going to drop real fast if the stock turns around. You got to monetize that, right? You got to sell that quickly to, to capture some of that value. The melting ice cube effect, yes. especially on the day of expiration with the theta coming. I always like to tell people it's like on the Friday, on the expiration day, the sun is right above you and holding an ice cube. It's going to melt faster and faster as we get to 4 p.m. because we're getting closer to the sun. So, you know, and that's that's a good way to think about theta. And if you were to, like, click on the 10-day uh, on the very top, right, you can actually start to see the view of all the strikes that started to trade on the 10 day scenario and you mm. can just to your point earlier what you were talking about the amount of calls and the certain strikes that people started to take on this week earlier even from last week boom it was the 120s 125s 130 135s and 150s yeah yeah you know, i mean look at that look at that flow, surge and increase exactly that yeah. this flow actually showed hey a lot of the retail people or whomever they are a lot of people are getting involved in GameStop and there's a ton of activity. So. Yeah. And, and credit where credit's due, th this move happened before the big equity rise. So, so 100%. you know, that, that was a big risk on signal, I think, overall for the market. And, and we write a daily note in, in for our subscribers at Spot Gamma that analyzes the, the options positioning, particularly the S&P. And one of the things that just kind of like, we had a little bit of a, of a bearish stance in the market, but we started to talk about protecting the right tail for, for people that yeah. want our letter because of this, some of this risk on activity that showed up in the likes of GameStop and AMC and some of these other names. I also want to use your tool here to look a little bit farther back because I'm curious, you know, we mentioned before there was that what looked like a, a margin call, right? Late last, I guess it was on the 12th that we flagged a little bit earlier. And you could see that there's a little bit of activity here, I suppose, yeah. if this is the 12th, right? But it, it pales in comparison to what took place, obviously, as you can see with these green bars over here. So it it's an amazing data tool to just go back in time to confirm what we think is happening. You know, it, it, it allows you to really search so quickly. Again, yeah, you can see here that is the 12th. And again, that looked to us like some type of margin call activity. To prove your here. margin call on the 12th, open on the 13th, the open interest actually went down on a lot of these strikes. Mm. So a lot of margin call, there's a lot of liquidation taking place. So you can see how it open interest drops right there, boom, right there at the end. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, and so that's that proves cool. exactly what you're saying. So you can see there was a liquidation event that happened with a lot of these strikes. Yeah. And looking at these May, you know, May 27 calls again, we were talking about how people love to pile into the short dated yeah. options. 
you know, as the week approaches, right? And that's exactly what happened. I mean, look how much is, is trading today of you know, those, those calls. So it's, it's, really, it's really fascinating to be able to dig into that and kind of looking forward here for, for GameStop. I mean, we're going to see such a change in, in open interest positions. I mean, you know, I'm actually looking at a two-day chart on another system here, and you could see that, you know, the stock just it hit that 130 level yesterday, and we've really just pinned that. Like, we try to pull away from that level a little bit. And so this 130, this big expiration, is, it's going to remove that tether. Right, that 130 level we believe will move, remove that tether and then we're going to shift up to some other strikes and if we want to sort of look and shift and see okay you know what's a good way to see where some other calls are layered in here and so we can look at it and say okay this this pin is going to be pulled here right may 27 and then so obviously the june expiration which is a huge expiration the s p indices and yep. all major stocks i mean it's just a massive expiration you have on 615 you also have the fomc uh, and then you saw the big vix expiration so there's a lot going on in this day and we will look at the call positions, you could see that, you know, after, let's say on, uh, on Tuesday after the Memorial Day holiday here, I would be looking at the open interest positions in GameStop to say, okay, where's the next big concentration of calls above and puts below as target prices for GameStop? Exactly. Um, Actually, if you forward. click on June 17th with your mouse right there, these are all the strikes within June 17th that are actually trading and the open interest below them and et cetera, et cetera. We clicked on just June 17 to see where some of these positions are going to line up. And just to start, you know, the, 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 the strikes you want to see here are the 120 strike is clearly a big one for June. We also flagged these 95 puts to the downside, so uh, 100 puts as well. So if I was looking at how to play this, you know, obviously we could, we could pull back some here with some support likely in that 100 area where has, we've seen some support in the past. But to get this thing to sort of juice a little bit higher, you're going to want to see more calls positioned. And a lot of those calls would likely come in on Tuesday, right? Because you want to lay the, the groundwork for the squeeze. And so calls that are slightly out of the money, that's what provides gamma for the gamma squeeze. And so, yes, this 120 is a good base, right? And I could see us giving a little bit more ground on Monday, excuse me, on Tuesday, back into that 120 area. But if we can pick up that call volume again, that's how you kind of get this thing to start squeezing, uh, squeezing anew, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. So this has been a fascinating way to combine these indicators, Saad. The, the power of, of shift is just, uh, it fascinates me. It's amazing that you guys are able to wrangle all of this data. It's been really valuable for me as a research tool and, and putting on some details around some of the, the higher level themes that we have. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I love using our platform in conjunction with Spot Gamma and, and just the marrying of that kind of fills in. It's like trying to read a book with certain missing chapters. And when I like to, <laughs> my own personal book, for my own personal trading, you know, some of the chapters that we're missing are provided in by Spot Gamma. And then all of a sudden you have a real book that's actually legible. And, and so one of the ways is, you know, you go on shiftsearch.com and you can actually sign in for free. It's available to everybody. We take all the 16 exchanges and we combine them together because and, and of course, on the top, you can click through sectors and you just kind of like check in with the market and see what's going on. Full overview of the market, exactly the breakdown. And it's a, and then, of course, you have shift insights. We tell you what is happening across random stocks on, on the on if you scroll to the bottom and various things about how open interest is behaving on on certain things and where earnings are coming up. So in combined with Spot Gamma, I think this is, again, filling in all the chapters of the book. Yeah, it's absolutely, and, and it provides just such an interesting, again, uh, way to just get granular very quickly, get granular and see exactly what's what's trading. So that's a, that's a fascinating tool, and it's all free on, on Shift Search. <laughs> uh, Saad, is there any way for people to connect directly with you if they want on Twitter or something of the like? Yeah, so you can follow us on Twitter, Shift Search, at Shift Search. And then at, at the same time, when you come on our site, you can always email directly to us, to me, to, to our team, or whomever. There's easier way to contact us yeah that's great and we're at spot game on twitter and if you have any questions uh, please pop them in the comment section below and either shot or myself will get back to you you got it thanks Todd. thank you